welcome to this week's episode of LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brona Morgan, and this is the show where we talk about what you're talking about, our viewers in southwestern Ontario, in London. The, and this is a big community full of all kinds of people, and a lot of them didn't originate from here. I'm from Niagara Falls, which is not that far away, but so many people weren't born in London that live in London right now. It's a growing city. You know it. It's a multicultural city. People coming from all over the world, making our community an amazing, diverse, vibrant place. Have you heard of the London Multicultural Association? I have heard about them, but the first time I got to interact with the London Multicultural Association was this summer. And I got to meet I think you're the, are you the president? Is yeah. that your, you're the president oh, yeah. of the London Multicultural Association recently. Jack is here and he's going to tell you, our viewers, all about the Multicultural Association, why it's important, what is a multicultural association and how you can get involved as well because there is a lot of ways to get involved and so many great people to meet and so many things to learn. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Jack, would you mind just giving us a little bit of history about the London Multicultural Association? When did it start? Why did it start? And what kind of things does the Multicultural Association do? Right, so I'll use your opening as a segue. And you're right, London has become more and more diversified. Uh, 20 years ago, it was diversified, but not as much as it is now, and we are catching up to the Ontario average and to the Can Canadian average. About 25%, maybe even more now, uh, of people who live in London are born outside of Canada. This is significant. One of four, maybe even, you know, one of three now, because London is really uh, developing in this respect. It uh, makes a big difference in our social life, in our economic life, in our education life we become a real city, finally. Now, when we started in 2010, 13 years ago, <coughs> it was after the um, earthquake in Haiti. Maybe people don't remember it, but it was a very serious earthquake Absolutely, at the yes. time. Many people killed, um, houses you know, destroyed, people didn't have where to live, no food, no medicine. So a few leaders from some ethnic communities in London, we were discussing, discussing and you know, getting together, maybe we should do something. So we decided to do a multicultural event. We organized a concert just in, in a few days because we really wanted to get uh, uh, donations and send them to AD. So a fundraising concert. It was a fundraising concert, thank you, uh, via the Red Cross and within a few days I, I couldn't appreciate how diversified London was 13 years ago, right? And people were so enthusiastic. We uh, found communities that we never heard about them, J just wanted to come and help and perform and mobilize their communities and so on and so forth. We had a huge concert, it was at the Centennial Hall. We had probably about 20 performers from 20 different ethnic groups at that time, which wow. was huge. I was shocked to see how London was diversified. And it was a huge success. We raised probably $10,000. And, and, and you know, people didn't write check for $1,000 and $5,000. It was a, gra a, a grassroots event. People came with $5, $10. And I could see that it's difficult for them to give the $10, right? But they wanted to do it. And to me, this kind of a donation is more important because people really want to feel that they help and help each other as a community. And then a year later, there was the tsunami in Japan. Uh, so we also did something. And then we decided we work well, so well together. Let's incorporate, which we did in April 2012. We incorporated as not-for-profit in, in Ontario. And since then, we have acted as a not-for-profit. We are based on volunteers. We have no staff. We have no expenses. Uh, every dollar that we get as a donation or a grant goes 100% to the specific project. And uh, what we do, we wanted to focus on uh, four items, four issues. This was a result of a town hall meeting that we did after incorporation, just to ask people from different communities what they really want us to do. Yeah, it was a good idea to, to, to create an association, but let's put some content in it. Absolutely. 
So they wanted us to continue with fundraising for uh, disasters, natural disasters, which we did. We did a few uh, relief concerts later on too. They also wanted us to focus on education, on uh, art, art and culture, and um, entrepreneurship. These are all issues that are very important to newcomers, new Canadians, from different aspects of, uh, of immigrants. Uh, for those who have not immigrated, uh, immigration is a tough process. Uh, people should not take it for granted. So are, did you immigrate to Canada? Yeah, I immigrated to Canada about 20 years ago with my wife and two kids. Uh, we had good jobs in our home country. Uh, our English was reasonable. We were exposed to the big world because both of us were in businesses where we dealt with people from other countries. But the immigration process was f very difficult. Not the application, but coming here and learn how to live in a new culture. Right? We spoke the language, but we still had language barriers and cultural barriers and all of the above. Everything was difficult. Opening a bank account was difficult, just because that's the nature of the thing. Getting a credit card was difficult. So we probably went 20 years back in our lives to do things that we did 20 years before we had immigrated, just to start a bank account and credit card and they put the kids at school and so on and so forth and find jobs. It was not easy for us, right? And so I guess one of the goals of the Multicultural Association is to kind of bring people together and kind of support each other during those complicated processes, isn't it? Right, absolutely. So, so, so the beauty is that uh, because we're all volunteers, uh, we got dozens and hundreds of volunteers um, because they just want to help. And just the process of getting together people from different cultures, different uh, you know, perspectives on life, it's amazing. And it's been demonstrated, uh, as an example, if you look at corporations, it's been demonstrated that the more diversified the corporations are, the better they do economically, etc. Just because people have different perspectives, different experiences, right? And just to see the dynamics around the table when we plan something and people come with ideas and usually we, we make decisions by consensus because that's how we want to do it. And it's great. All those ideas and enthusiasm, it's, it's really nice. And just by getting together and doing events that hopefully we'll have time to talk about them later, we bring people together. Well, I know what the, the huge event that I participated in in the summertime, fantastic, is a multicultural festival. So oh. it happens, I think, at the beginning of the summer. Beginning of June, yeah. Yeah, and what, a, like, music and food and culture and art and learning and bringing community together. How long has that been going on? Uh, we started the multicultural event bank in 2014, but as a standalone festival, the first one was in 2018. Then we did another one in 2019, and then because co of COVID, we had to stop. Right. But then we came back in 2022 and, and this year, and they're just growing Fantastic. exponentially. And also, I know, because we just have a little bit of time left before our break, you have something coming up in December? In November, November. Actually, yeah. So uh, tell our viewers about the, I think it's a gala coming yeah, up. Yeah, we, we call it a gala. It's not so fancy as it sounds, but uh, it's a nice multicultural event. It's on November 26. Uh, Sunday. Uh, we call it the only multicultural dinner in town. It is a dinner. Uh, last year we started a, a new tradition, I hope, that each year a different community will provide uh, the food and the entertainment. So last year we had a nice combination of Indian food and an Irish band. I know that you are Irish. <laughs> and this year the Filipino community provides both the food and the entertainment. So we're going to enjoy delicious Filipino food and uh, watch uh, great Filipino dances. So this is this part, and you, you have people from dozens of different organizations rep come in, as representatives, and we mix together and we mingle and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a guest uh, speaker. We also made it a tradition, and usually it's an immigrant because we want immigrants to come and tell us their life story, and usually it's, immigra it's immigrants from London and people who became successful in their careers, whatever they do, different uh, you know, parts of lives. And we want them to tell us about their life story 
opportunities and challenges when they immigrated, and how they became successful at what they did. And their stories have inspired hundreds of people along the, the years at the different uh, galas, because you really, it's authentic, it's true, and they don't hide anything. Yes. The bad and the good and the ugly. And they say, here, we, we have succeeded, we made it, this is what we are doing. So very, very <coughs> wonderful content. So many things that we can not only learn, but we can enjoy trying different kinds of food, being entertained at this wonderful event coming up in November. Now we do have to take a break. So okay. that's just one of the amazing multicultural events coming up this month and all year round here in London. So please stay tuned because we're going to be talking to more people from more cultural societies right here in London after the break. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. Welcome to Treat Yourself on Rogers TV, where Terry and I go out to local salons and spas and have services done on us so that we can tell you all about them. So that you can treat yourself. I've been a volunteer at Rogers for about eight months as of now. I decided to volunteer after watching a volunteer feature at a Delaware Speedway broadcast. And I thought to myself, man, I want to work on this one day. This looks like a lot of fun. I learned a ton of practical things over my last eight months at Rogers TV, like camera and graphics. It means a lot to me. Volunteering gave me the skills I need for a successful future. And hopefully I become a professional broadcaster in the coming years. For those of you just starting, it's perfect. You should just join, you should join Rogers TV. It's a pretty fun experience and one that will last you a lifetime. You're watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brona, talking about the importance of multicultural associations. So bringing people who are new to Canada, new to London, from all different places in the world together to make wonderful events, to build connections, to educate, to build community, and to have a great time together. So welcoming now Kim and Jack. So they're both board members on the London Multicultural Association as well. Now okay. it's Korean Community Association or Society? Korean Society of London. Korean Society, Society of, of London. London. So there's a lot of different <laughs> letters and words, but just to describe the concept of bringing people together that have come to Canada from a different part of the world, sharing their culture with each other, but also um, supporting each other mm -hmm. and helping people like us who I don't have any background about what it's like to speak Korean, not to, don't know too much about Korean culture. And there are so many wonderful people to learn from and get to know. So many wonderful societies and cultures make up our fantastic city. Mm -hmm. So thank you, welcome to the show. Hello. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit about how the individual associations interact with the larger umbrella organization. So um, you've got a board and all, so how many different societies come fall within that multicultural association? Do you have a number? So we have dozens of different cultures that participate in our events, but not all of them are members of the board. The board, I think, represents about seven different communities, because mm. we cannot put 30 people on the board, of right? Of course. But you don't have to be a member or a board member to participate in the events. Absolutely. So everybody is invited. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the events. There is so much wonderful work that the Multicultural Association does. You've already talked a little bit about supporting different people all throughout the world in different places throughout the world when a natural disaster happens. But you're also doing support, doing wonderful projects that are supporting people here in our community. And one of them is a scholarship. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So tell our viewers a little bit about that. So uh, we have started uh, years ago a scholarship funds for immigrant high school students. Uh, it was King's University College who helped us to initiate the fund. Since there other funders stepped to the plate, uh, Will Employment Solutions, uh, the Rotary Club South London, Siskins the Law Firm, and the local El Salvadorian community who decided we want to do it too. So it's a program from, for immigrant high school students. Uh, they must be less than three years in Canada to uh, qualify for the scholarship. And the gala that we mentioned before, this is the time and place where we give the scholarships to the students. Fantastic. This year we got record uh, number of applications. Mm -hmm. We're going, to, and every, most, mo most of the funders added more scholarships because they, they just couldn't select who's better than the others. Such high quality of applicants mm -hmm. this year, it's unbelievable. So we are very happy about uh, the scholarship. The students are thrilled. It helps them, whatever they want to buy a laptop or save it for their post-secondary education. Uh, they are so thankful and we are so proud to have such good people in London. Fantastic. All right, diving a little bit more now, Kim, mm -hmm. into the individual association that you're involved with. So maybe you could give our viewers a little bit of history okay. and maybe tell them how they can get involved. Uh, Korean Society of London has established since 1968. Wow. So long history. We're just struggling still with uh, uh, less, less than 10 volunteers. And uh, we just help uh, uh, newcomers get climatized to the new environment in Canada and in the uh, city of London. And also try to get connected to other main society and also other uh, all different communities exchange our cultures and uh, get to know each other and uh, I'm so thankful that I got uh, part of the board of uh, London Multicultural Communities of the book Jack so we worked so get to together worked together so like almost 15 years so uh, part of uh, as a LMCA we participated uh, June uh, festival and also the gala in November Fantastic. Yeah. And now, what other events does your specific organization mm -hmm. put on during the year, maybe outside of the umbrella of okay. the Multicultural Association? Our main uh, event, the biggest event is in August, uh, is Independence Day, Liberation Day celebration in every 3rd August, which we already plan for doing it year 2024, August the 17th. So we invite all these people, community members and friends, and, uh, and we just celebrate. And mm -hmm. so how can people get involved? Are you looking for volunteers? Mm -hmm. Can people come and attend the event? Sure, anybody is joined, uh, welcome to join. Yeah. And what would you expect if you were to attend this event? Uh, music, eating? Oh yeah, we have some performance and uh, dance together and uh, Korean uh, food are all offered. So anybody who joins can in, uh, enjoy the Korean food. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So lots to look forward to, not just coming up in November, but also coming up in August. August, yeah. Looking forward to it as well. So we do have to take another break, but more information about another cultural association here in London that you can get involved with as well after the break. So please stay with us. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. After a night out with your friends, not having a plan for a safe ride home can leave you in a bad spot. You could end up riding in a police car, an ambulance, or a hearse. These unplanned modes of transportation can be a costly choice and do not take you home. Your plan could include a designated driver, a taxi, or public transit. Drink responsibly, choose your ride, and have a plan for a safe ride home. Visit ArriveAlive.org to find out more. I'm Jennifer Slay, the host of What's Up London. 
Join me each week as I meet Londoners who are doing extraordinary things and helping to make the city a better place to live. Watch What's Up London, Mondays, only on Rogers TV. Watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. Your host, Brona. I don't know if you knew this, but my parents are from Belfast, Northern Ireland. I'm Canadian born, but guess what? In the summertime, I finally got to connect at the Multicultural Festival with the Irish Cultural Society. I think, do I, did I get that right? The London Irish- Canadian, Canadian Cultural Society. Canadian Cultural Society. Yeah, that's so right. finally- It's a mouthful. Yeah. All the time I've lived in London, I finally got to connect with my countrymen, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> my parents countrymen. That's right. So Alan Dara, representatives of the London Irish Canadian, I can read it right on your shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's Society right. <laughs> are here to talk to us about their organization and how you can get involved as well. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. How about giving us a little bit of a history of the society here in London? Um, well, the society was born out of a few like-minded Irish and Irish Canadians. Um, just unable to find anywhere where we could actually meet other Irish people, celebrate our culture. Um, and from that then we, we started like, um, taking out local venues, um, booking them and um, running Irish events around Halloween, Christmas, St. Patrick's Day obviously. And um, the feedback we got from the Irish community was really, really good. Um, so then we realised we really didn't need a permanent place for, a London club in a, for an Irish club in London. Um, so that really brought us to where we are today. Um, uh, we're currently located on Dundas Street at 4308. Um, it's a space that we share with um, St George's Rugby Club. Um, it's somewhere that really suits us. Um, we've got uh, use of the sports areas out the back where we play our soccer team in the summer. Um, we've also got ample parking and then the club itself. It's got a nice cosy bar and um, we've got plenty of room to have larger events as well. Yeah, it's an awesome space. So first time I ever made it into the club was, I think was the air show. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, yes. back in yeah. September. Right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we've got all our space there we can utilize in the summer, which is really, really nice. Yeah. So right out by Trails End Market for anybody who is not familiar yeah. with that end of town, right? Just before you get there from London, driving out. So um, how long has the society been kind of active? Yeah, so this is uh, something that was kind of born out of the pandemic, actually. So like he, like he mentioned, a group of like-minded Irish individuals living here in London, Ontario, um, got together one day and there was just this desire for a sense of community and belonging in Ireland. So uh, we got together and decided, let's, let's try and make it happen. So this was probably back in 2020. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we got together as a committee, um, reached out to some other organizations. And this is one of the wonderful things about London, Ontario, or just Canada in general, just different cultures coming together. We actually reached out to the Polish Hall and utilized their space during the pandemic because they weren't really able to get many people out there because of the pandemic restrictions and stuff. So we actually ended up utilizing their space to begin running our events. And uh, we had such a positive response. We started you know, exploring elsewhere and that's how we got connected with the St. George's uh, Rugby Society. Right. And through there, we were able to, to get their space as well, to rent out their space. And that's kind of been our home for the last two and a half to three years now. So and what are good. your different roles within the society? That's a great question. <laughs> well, we're guess, uh, many hands make light work, so that's it's probably exactly every yes. job, yeah, right? That's exactly yeah, we're wearing it. a lot of hats at the moment, right. so that's, again, why we're here is to just, you know, let people know we're around. And if we can get more people that would like to help on a committee or help mm -hmm. on our events, well, you know, they're more than welcome. Yeah. And so how does somebody get involved? That's a great question. So um, we do have a Facebook page as well as a website. So we've had a lot of community outreach through there. People come out to our events. They really enjoy themselves and they feel this desire to get involved and this want to get involved. And we're very open. The more the more help, the better we feel with our community. So uh, just reaching out to us through social media is an excellent way to get involved. Coming out to any of our events to meet us person to person is great. Um, as we met you at the uh, Multicultural Day Fest over in uh, the Covent Garden Market, just you know, meeting face to face or through social media, any way like that, and then uh, we can have you come out to one of our committee meetings. We try and meet together at least once or twice yeah. a month, um, plan events and uh, share ideas. So those are excellent opportunities to kind of get involved as well. All right. So 
um, in terms of your interaction with the different cultural societies and what yeah. kind of um, feedback do you get from the different cultural societies? How do you all work together as kind of this larger community to kind of, are you educating people about your different cultures? Are you trying to just make people have a good time? What is the, I guess, your main goal? I, I think initially it was a bit of a selfish thing. We wanted to kind of meet other Irish people. Mm -hmm. But now since we've got to the club, we've realized that we can actually share that with the rest of London. Um, and you know, everyone is welcome out there. Um, we'd love to see all different types of people come out and like, share with us, you know, the same types of cultures that we're trying to share with them. Um, again, as he sa said, we spent a lot of time in the Polish club, and it was very nice just to you know be sampling their food, their beers, yeah, things like that. So cabbage rolls. It's something we want to help out with other communities as well if we can. Fantastic. All right. So, what's coming up for people who want to get involved with this society? Yeah, that's awesome. So we do, um, as a club, we do try and run at least one to two events per month. Um, we're really fortunate, actually. We have. This uh, December 2nd, we've got Derek Warfield, uh, one of the founding members of the Wolf Tones. He's now got himself a, a new band, the Young Wolf Tones. So they're uh, going to be stopping at our, at our club on December 2nd. Pretty exciting. They're doing a, a big tour throughout the US and Ireland, and we happen to be the only Canadian city that they are stopping at. Here. Crazy, right? Yeah. So um, we're really fortunate and excited to have them. So currently, that's our, that's our most recent upcoming event. Um, apart from that, we do also offer, or we will be doing um, a Christmas event for kids, uh, December 17th. So that's a Sunday, I believe. Um, and then we're hoping to do one of our more popular events as well in January. We like to run a whiskey tasting. Nice. Um, we do also offer pub trivia quiz nights. Um, we're looking to run one in February. Yes. And then, of course, uh, our big event of the year, we're going to be hosting our annual St. Paddy's Day party in no March. A better place to be. And that's just it. Yeah, we, exactly. we, we're pretty proud of the show we put on for that day as well. So Absolutely. So people who are interested in Irish culture, mm -hmm people who are interested in just meeting some cool people yeah any age that's right exactly that's one of the wonderful things about our community is that it is so intergenerational we have people who have were born in ireland have immigrated to canada we have people like yourself and i who um our parents immigrated here and then you know gave birth to us and then we're uh growing up experiencing that irish culture so it is great just to see the intergenerational links that we're able to kind of develop within our community it's great. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for all the work you do. Looking forward to the Young Wolf Tones. Yeah, <laughs> that super is, pumped. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Blew, yeah, blew my mind when I heard about that one. All right, so viewers, get involved with one of the many, many multicultural associations, societies, clubs here in London. It doesn't matter where you're from. Even if you're from here, there are people to learn. There are people to learn from, people who want to entertain you. They definitely want to feed you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you to all of our guests, and we hope you'll tune in again next week for more LDN ONT TV. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. family with addiction, the person with the addiction becomes front, center, all the time. The addiction and substance use affects all the layers of our society. Everything was...